Haleluya. Amjambo. Asante natumai ya kwamba kila mmoja wetu amekuwa na wiki njema, wiki ya fanaka, wiki ambayo Mungu ameweza kulinda kila mmoja wenu na tunamshukuru kwa umbali ambao umetufikisha ndugu wa Lusimbi karibu. Um, tunafuraha kuweza kuwaona mara nyingine tena hasa baada ya wiki mzima mwingine hatuweza hatujaweza kuonana katikati ya wiki uh, maana kwa sababu labda hamkuwezeshwa kufika katika bible study ama katika maombi lakini bado tunawaimiza kama wachungaji wenu tunawaimiza jamani karibuni eh, karibuni katika bible study vijana karibuni katika your youth service wengine uh, wote kanisa kwa jumla karibuni katika maombi siku ya Ijumaa na uh, itakuwa ni vyema when we come together to pray together to learn the word of god together hapo kuja pamoja kuomba pamoja na kujifunza neno lake Mungu pamoja today our senior pastor our daddy is not in the house kwa leo askofu uh, ambaye ndiye baba yetu yuko pamoja na asi. Remember last Sunday he was at Omega when they were launching the church. Kumbuka Juma pili lopita alikuwa katika kanisa letu baadhi ya makanisa yetu pale Omega wakianza kuasisi kanisa hilo. But today he is uh, okay on Friday he traveled up country for a burial. Na lakini siku ya Ijumaa akapata kusafiri kwenda mashambani kwa ajili ya mazishi so fulani. That is where they are still at together with their mama. Tunatumai mpaka wa leo yuko pale na wakiwa pamoja na mama. So they'll be coming back in the course of this week. Na tunataraji kwamba watakuwa narejea kati ya Juma. And uh, I'm blessed to have you here. Na pia nabarikiwa kuwa nanyi mahali hapa. We want to thank God for each and every one of you. Tunataka kushukuru Mungu kwa ajili ya kila mmoja wenu. We don't take your coming for granted. Atuchukulii hivi hivi tu kuja kwenu. But we know that one day we shall give an account before God because of your lives. Kwa hakika tunafahamu na kujua kwamba wakati siku moja tutatoa hesabu kuhusu maisha yenu. And so we are glad to see you. Kwa hivyo tunafuraha kuweza kuona. We are glad when we interact. Na tunafuraha jinsi kwa wakati mmoja tunajuliana hali moja na mwingine. Because we are one body. Kwa sababu si ni mwili mmoja. The body of Christ. Mwili wake Kristo. I want to believe that today you came ready to hear from the Lord. Naamini kwamba leo umekuja ukiwa tayari kulisikia neno lake Mungu. Leave you have come with your Bible. Pengine umekuja pia na Biblia yako. You come with your notebook. Umekuja na mahali pa kuweza kuna kile. Either e notebook or a hard cover notebook. Pengine ni katika kile kitabu ambacho ni kile kia uh, katika hali ya mtandao ama kitabu kile ambacho ni cha kawaida. Yeah, so we want to believe that we have come ready to hear from the Lord. Tunaamini kwamba umekuja ukiwa na utiari kusikia kutoka kwa Bwana. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. Kwa heshima kubwa muweze kuketi katika uwepo wake Mungu. Then you open together with me in the book of Luke chapter 24. Na alafu fumbuliza pamoja nami katika kitabu cha Luka mlango ni wa 24. Luke chapter 24. Luka mlango ni wa 24. We are we are going to read a couple of verses from that chapter. Tutasoma baadhi ya mistari katika mlango huo. If you are visiting us for the first or you are you are you are worshiping together with us for the first time. Na pengine kama ni wewe umetutembelea ama unashiriki pamoja kwa mara ya kwanza. On behalf of the church board I just want to say You are most welcome. Na kwa al, kwa niaba ya almashauri ya kanisa na kukaribisha kwa mikono mikunjufu. We are a Bible believing church. Sisi ni kanisa ambalo tunaamini neno we la preach, la Mungu. We preach the scriptures. Tuna hubiri neno halisi lake Mungu. And we want to thank God. Na tunamshukuru Mungu. That he has given us an opportunity. Na pia kwamba ametupa fursa to do so while it is still daytime. Tuweze kutekeleza na kufanya hivyo wakati ungali mchana. So Matthew chapter 24. Kwa hivyo kitabu cha Luka mlango ni wa 24 read a couple of verses tutasoma misari kadha wa kadha then we going to proceed on na tutaendelea going to read from verse 3 tutasoma kutangia msari wa 3 then we'll jump to verse 27 to 31 tutaruka tuende msari wa 27 na 31 moja mephio the gospel according to, according to mephio kitabu ni cha mathayo mlango ni wa 24 now as he sat on the mount of olives the disciples came to him privately saying tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age sorry what tatu kitabu ni cha mathayo mtakatifu inasema hivi hata alipokuwa ameketi katika mlima wa mizaituni wanafunzi wake wakamwendea kwa faraga akisema tuambie mambo haya yatakayo yatakuwa lini nayo ni nini 
dalili yake ikuja kwa kwako na mwisho wa dunia verse 27 for as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west so also will the coming of the son of man be mstari wa 27 nasema hivi kwa maana kama vile umeme utokavyo mashariki ukaonekana hata magharibi hivyo ndivyo kutakavyo kuwa kuja kwa mwana wa adamu For wherever the carcass is there the eagles will be gathered together. Msari wa 28 sema hivi kwa kuwa popote ulipomzoga ndipo watakapokusanyika tai. Immediately after the tribulation of those days the sun will be darkened the moon will not give its light the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Msari wa 29 sema hivi lakini mara baada ya dhiki ya siku zile jua litatiwa giza na mwezi hautatoa mwanga wake na nyota zitaanguka mbinguni na nguvu za na, na nguvu za na nguvu za mbinguni zitatikisisha zita, zita, zita then the sign of the son of man will appear in heaven and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn they will see the son of man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory Salasini ndipo itakapo atakapoonekana itakapoonekana ishara yake mwana wa Adamu mbinguni ndipo mataifa yote ya ulimwengu watakapomboleza nao watamuona mwana wa Adamu akija juu ya mawingu na ya mawingu ya mbinguni pamoja na nguvu na utukufu mwingi and he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they will gather together his elect from the four winds and from one end of heaven to the other. Salasina moja naye atawatuma malaika zake pamoja na sauti kuu ya parapanda nao watawakusanya wateule wake toka pepo nne. Father we want to thank you for your word. Baba tunataka kushukuru kwa usomaji wa neno lako. Your word is living and is sharper than any two edged sword. Neno lako ni hai na linakata kuwili and we pray the lord may your word work upon our hearts this afternoon. Na tunaomba kwamba baba neno lako likatende kazi katika maisha yetu siku ya leo. Speak to us and rekindle your hope in our lives oh god. Uweze kutunenea na kuweza kuasha kuweusha moto wako tena katika maisha yetu bwana. May you strengthen us even as we continue journeying uh, in this walk of faith. Kama jinsi unavyotutia moyo na nguvu kama jinsi tunavyoendelea katika safari hii ya imani. In Jesus name we do pray and give thanks. Katika jina takatifu la Yesu Kristo tunaomba na kushukuru. Amen. Amina. So this afternoon we are gathered here. Kwa hiyo wadhuri leo tumekusanyika mahali hapa. Because God has given us an opportunity. Kwa sababu Mungu ametupa fursa in the midst of this confusion that is that we are having in the world. Hata kati katika maisha haya ambayo yamejawa na hali ya sintofahamu nyingi. That we may still listen to his word ili kwamba tuweze bado kusikiza neno lake so that his hope can be rekindled in us ili kwamba tumaini letu katika yeye iliweze kuishwa ndani yetu so that even the weak may be strengthened ili kwamba walio dhaifu pia waweze kutiwa moyo and we may continue in the journey of faith na tuweze kuendelea katika safari ya imani as we wait for his coming kama jinsi tunavyotarajia kurejea kwake mara ya pili from the text we have read from Asubuhi leo katika somo ama mahali ambapo tumesoma katika Biblia ya Mathayo the disciples wanafunzi were with Christ walikuwa pamoja na Kristo and they were looking at the temple that was at Jerusalem na wakao wanatazama jengo la hekalu kule Yerusalemu and the temple was a magnificent one na hekalu ilikuwa ni limerembeka kweli and they called Jesus to attention na wakamuuliza Yesu ama kamuuliza Yesu kumuelekeza katika jengo hilo and as, as they called him to attention walipomuita ama kumuelekeza katika jengo hilo it, it, it is like they wanted to brag about the beauty of their temple ni kana kwamba walikuwa wanataka jisifia kuhusu rembo wa jengo hilo and because jesus knows each and everything na kwamba sababu yesu anafahamu kila kitu it's like he read what was in their mind kwamba akawa tayari ametambua yale yaliyokuwa katika fikra zao and in verse two of this chapter na katika msari wa 4 katika mlango huo he tells them do you see all these things anawaambia kwamba mnayaona haya yote truly i tell you not one stone here will be left on another Akika, everyone will be thrown down hakika nawaambieni kwamba hakuna jiwe litakalosalia juu ya lingine hakuna jiwe litakalosalia juu ya lingine so he, he, it's like he read their mind so ni kwa nakana kwamba alikuwa ameweza kuwasoma mawazo yao so the disciples went back to him privately and asked master tell us when shall these things be basi nao wanafunzi wake wakienda katika hali ya 
kujificha katika hali ya kumuhoji kumuuliza haya yote yatatukia lini when will our temple be destroyed ni wakati gani ambapo hekalu letu taweza kuharibiwa and what are the signs that shall be there to warn us na kwamba ishara itakuwa ni ipi kwamba tuweze kujitayarisha so this afternoon kwa hivyo dhuria leo by the grace of god kwa neema zake mungu i want to speak about the second coming of christ nataka kunena kuhusu kurejea mara ya pili kwake yesu kristo is what the theologians call eschatology kwa hiyo ndio wale wanaosoma mambo ya biblia wanaita eschatology the things that are in the future yale mambo ambayo yako usoni the things that are yet to happen mambo ambayo hayajatendeka they are certainly coming lakini yanawadia yanakucha and if ever there is something that is surely coming is the coming of the lord na kwa hakika kama kuna kitu ambacho kama wa kristo tunatarajia kinacho kitukia hivi karibuni ni kurejea kwake Yesu Kristo mara ya pili in greek katika hali ya kiunani this word of the second coming ili neno kurejea mara ya pili they call it parousia wanakiita barokia parousia barousia and it means arrival inamaanisha kule kuwasili it means uh, the presence na inasema kwamba kuwasili tayari yupo and it's like uh, Uh, a military invasion ni kama katika hali ya lugha ya kijeshi recently the taliban invaded Af- afghanistan until the president and the people fled kwa, uh, kama yale yaliyotendeka hivi karibuni kule afghanistan kwamba kukakuwa na mapinduzi na as- uh, ule rais akatoweka i saw i saw i saw a plane and it was like a 19 matatu 1961 going to uh, going to uh, Kayole Nikaona wale raia wa kule Afghanistan wamedandia Kiswahili kwa kueleweka ndege kama matatu za Kayole forward Watu walikuwa wamedandia So it is like a military invasion Ni kama kule uvamizi wa kijeshi It is like a visit by a dignitary Ni kama kutembelewa na yule mtu ambaye hakuna dhifa kuu In the second service I was telling people recently we had a polio vaccination. Nikaambia katika ibada ya pili kwamba karibuni tumekuwa na kule kuwekwa chanjo ya uh, polio. And uh, Ukambi, one of the areas that I was supervising. Na kati ya zile eh, maeneo ambayo nilikuwa nina uh, simamia. We had a difficult community. Tulikuwa na jamii ambayo ilikuwa na utata mwingi. So they called me and they said uh, the county supervisor please come and talk to these people. Kwa hivyo nikaitwa nikaambiwa kama wewe ambaye ni msimamizi njoo uweze kuzungumza na jamii hii. So when I went and talked to the chairman of that community. Kwa hivyo nilipoenda kuzungumza na mbwana kubwa wa kijiji kile. Because it is a, a close community they have their own schools from kindergarten to uh, to university they have their own shops they have their own banks and they are just in that community basi ni jamii ndogo ambayo mambo yao wanafanya kwa umoja tangia shule ya chekechea mpaka hata kichuo kikuu yeah you got born you, 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 are, you are born in block a you get married in block c eh wewe umezaliwa dandora kanan umesoma dandora kanan umezaa umeolewa kila kitu chako umefanyia kanan so they are closed community walikuwa jamii ya namna hiyo so when i went the chairman told me We are not refusing. Na ule bwana msimamizi wa kile kijiji akaniambia sisi hatukatai. We are ready to receive this vaccine. Tuko tayari kupokea chanjo hii. But right now, lakini kwa sasa, we are preparing to receive his highness. Kwa sasa kuna mataraji ama kuna maandalizi ya kumpokea ule ambaye ni mkuu wa eneo hili. The representative of their god. Kwamba yule ambaye ni mwakilishi wa Mungu wao. So they were waiting for his highness. Walikuwa wanatarajia mkuu and wao. The, and it was like everything had come to a standstill. Na kana kwamba kila kitu kilikuwa kimesambaratika, kimesimama wima. Was cleaning his or her house to make sure when his highness comes everything is in order. Walikuwa kwamba kila mtu ni kujitakasa, kujiweka safi kwamba yule bwana mkubwa atakapoingia kila kitu kiko kama hali pake. Parousia. Parousia. Or it's like when uh, when we have a special manifestation of the gods ama kwamba ni katika wakati ambapo kuna hali ya kudhihirika ya miungu fulani so this morning as we look at this text kwa hivyo asubuhi ya leo tunapotizama maandiko haya when jesus was speaking to his disciples wakati yesu kristo akinena na wanafunzi wake he started wake. unpacking each and everything to them alikaanza kufunua na kuwaeleza kila jambo and one thing we really need to understand na jambo moja ambalo linatupasa kupata kulifahamu the coming back 
of the Lord the second time is very certain. Ni kwamba kurejea kwake kwa pili kwa Bwana wetu Yesu Kristo ni hakika. The probability is 100 over 100. Kwamba uhakika ni kwamba ni asilimia mia. There is no missing out. Haiwezi kukosa. Because when Christ was here on earth, kwa sababu Kristo akiwa hapa duniani, when he started his ministry, akianza ile huduma yake, and he continued with the disciples. Na akaendelea pamoja na wafunzi wake. He asked the disciples who to be say that I am. Wa usiku mmoja wanafunzi akawauliza watu wanasema mimi nani? And as they continued Peter through the Holy Spirit said you are the son of God. Akiwa wakajaribu kila mtu anajaribu kuuliza na kujibu swali hile Roma mtakatifu akamfunulia Petro na kumwambia wanasema wewe ni bwana. Then after knowing who he was. Yeah, baada ya kutambua yeye ni nani? In Matthew chapter 16 verse 21. Katika kitabu cha Mathayo 16 mstari wa 21. He starts telling them. Anaanza kwa kuambia. I'm only here for a short period of time. Na kwamba niko hapa kwa muda mfupi tu. A time will come when they will arrest me. Inawadia wakati ambapo watanishika kunikamata. Then they will kill me. Alafu wataniua. Then I will be buried. Alafu nitazikwa. But on the third day, lakini siku ya tatu, I will rise up again. Mimi nitafufuka. Hallelujah. Amen. So that is what he told his uh, disciples. Hiyo ndivyo vile alivyowaambia wanafunzi wake. Truly to his words. Na kwa hakika kwa ajili ya neno lake kwa kweli. At the end of his three year ministry period. Baada ya tamati ya miaka mitatu ya huduma yake na nusu after, after he was welcomed with a lot of hosanna hosanna blessed he see who comes in the name of the lord baada ya kukaribishwa katika mji wa Yerusalemu na nyimbo na tafrija mbalimbali kusema kwamba mbarikiwa ni yule anayekuja katika neno lake bwana he was killed aliwawa and he was buried na kazikwa and truly to his word na kwa hakika neno lake litimie on the third day siku ya tatu he rose again akafufuka even when his disciples went to look for him in the tomb hata wakati wanafunzi wake walipiga mbio kwenda kumwangalia katika there kaburi were, there were angels there kulikuwa na malaika pale they, they told them na wakamwambia he is not here hayupo tena he hapa he is risen yeye amefufuka remember how he spoke to you kumbukaini jinsi alivyowaambia when, when he was still in galilee wakati ambapo mlikuwa pale galilee when he told you wakati alipowaambia the son of man kwamba mwana adamu will be delivered in the hands of sinful men atapeana kwa mikono ya watu wa adamu na ataweza kutundikwa msalabani then on the third day na baada ya siku tatu he will rise up again na siku ya tatu atafufuka say in Luke chapter 24 verse 8 Na Biblia nasema katika Luka mlango ni wa 24 mstari wa 28 In verse 8 Mla mstari wa 8 That they remembered his word Na kawaisema kwamba wakakumbuka maneno yake His promises are yes and amen Hadi zake Mungu ni ndio na niamina He he said that he promised Aliweza kuweza kutoweka hadi That he will die but he will resurrect Ya kwamba ataweza kufa lakini atafufuka Now sasa He is telling his disciples Na anambia wanafunzi wake In chapter 14 of Ma of John Katika mlango wa 14 wa kitabu cha Yohana Because as he continued to tell them that he will go away he will die and leave them Jinsi anavyoendelea kuwa ambia kwamba ataondoka na kwamba atakufa mioyo yao ikawa inafadhaika and in john chapter 14 verse 3 na katika mlango wa 14 chapter ya yohana msali wa 3 he gives them up anawapa tumaini and he tells them na anamwambia hivi that i will go na kwamba mimi nitaondoka na baada ya kuondoka i will come back nitarejea hallelujah amen he promise he is coming back aliahidi kurejea kwake mara pili the one who promised that he will die and resurrect yule ambaye aliyesema kwamba atakufa na kuweza kufufuka is that is promising to come back again na ndiye pia anatoa ahadi kwamba atarejea mara pili so may take his disciples ili kwamba kawachukue wanafunzi wake so that wherever he is kwamba mahali alipo they may be there pia nao wawepo but before he comes back lakini kabla arejee there are certain events kuna matukio that have to take place ambao lazima yatukie number 1 ja, tukio la kwanza we will have what we call the rapture lazima kuwe na kule kunyakuliwa the rapture kunyakuliwa the taking away kuweza kunyakuliwa i know in the in the in the in the in the scriptures is not written rapture na najua katika maandiko haijanukuliwa hali ya kuweza kunyakuliwa but it is written taking away yani ni kunyakuliwa when the church shall be taken away wakati kanisa litanyakuliwa i want us for two for two minutes we we watch a clip nataka kwa dakika mbili tuweze kuona picha hapa ya firamu on how somebody shown that 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 uh, issue of rapture jinsi katika filamu inaonyeshwa jinsi hali ya kunyakulia kutakavyokuwa because it will be a dangerous time kwa sababu itakuwa ni wakati hatari Repentance is now what it says I 
money can be found. Tomorrow might be too late. Oh. He's knocking at the door of your heart. Let him in. He's waiting for you. Remember, he will not wait forever. He's a call. Second coming of the Lord. Rapture will happen. The taking away of the church. And that is why we are encouraging us. That is not a time to play with Christianity. You are either hot or cold. You are either in Christ or in Satan. You have to make a decision. And you have to walk as per your decision. Because a time is coming when the church will be taken away. And as you saw, we will have different things taking place. Two will be preaching together. And one will go. The another one will be lost. A driver born again driver. Waiting upon the coming of the Lord. Will be taken and leave the vehicle going by itself. Or even the pilot will leave the, the, the plane in autopilot. And various accidents will take place. And the police will go about handing for the, tra- for the drivers. The police will go around war, uh, searching for the drivers. But unfortunately they have been ruptured. Immediately after the rapture. A seven year period of tribulation. A time of tribulation. Hard times. For seven good years. The book of Revelation is dividing them into three and a half, three and a half. Basi katika kitabu cha ufunuo kina kina gawanyisha miaka mitatu mitatu kwa na nusu. Then after that, na baada ya hiyo, during the time of uh, uh, during the time of uh, tribulation, wakati huo ambao ni wakati wa dhiki, because the time of grace will have gone. Kwa sababu wakati wa neema utakuwa umeondolewa. You will be saved through your own blood. Wewe utaokolewa kupitia katika juhudi na damu yako. Because even during that time death will flee away. Kwa sababu hata kipindi hicho kifo kifo kitakuwa kiko mbali. We are seeing people killing each other aimlessly. Tutaona watu wanaoana moja na mwingine pasipo na sababu. But during that during that period lakini katika wakati huo death will flee away from us kifo kitakuwa kinatutoroka anybody who will even want to commit suicide hata ukitaka kujitia kitanzi will not be able to do so hautaweza kujitia kitanzi death will have fled away from you kwa sababu kifo kitasema a a that is why we are saying ndipo tunasema brother sister ndugu na dada let us hold on the faith na tushikilie sana imani hiyo so that we be partakers in the in the in the rapture kwa ili kwamba tuwe ni pamoja na wale ambao tutaweza kujakuliwa so that we be saved from that period of tribulation. 
Tume, tumesalimika kipindi hicho cha after the seven year period of tribulation na baada ya miaka hiyo saba ya dhiki the sign of the son of man basi ishara ya mwana adamu will be seen in the sky itaonekana kule mbinguni the son of man will descend on the earth na mwana adamu atatumwa atateremka kutoka hapa duniani he will land on the mount olives ataweza kushuka katika mlima wa oliveti amen i mean i'm tune sorry So we are, we want to walk through this this theme or this topic hivyo, of the second coming of Christ. Kwa hivyo tunataka tuendende ama tusifulize katika jambo hili la kurejea mara ya pili kwa yake Yesu Kristo. But we know that Christ talked about it. Lakini tunajua kwamba Kristo alinena kuhusu. He promised. Akaweza kuahidi. Let me just look at a few witnesses that have also promised. Hebu tutazame baadhi ya watu wengine ambao wamezungumzia kurejea kwake mara ya pili kwa Yesu Kristo. When he ascended on high. Walikuwa wakati alipopaa mbinguni. After being here on earth for 40 days after his resurrection. Baada ya kuwa hapa duniani kwa siku 40 baada ya kufufuka kwake. He ascended on high. Akapaa juu mbinguni. And the disciples and the crowd were there watching. Basi wale wanafunzi na wachungaji wote wote walikuwa pale wakitizama. And two men appear unto them. Na watu wawili wakatokea katokea and they told them nakawaambia you people of galilee nyinyi wana watu wa galilaya this christ that you have seen going up this way huyo kristo ambao umemmuona akipaa juu mbinguni namna hii he will one day come back again the same same way vivo vivo alivyopaa atarejea vivo hivyo so the two angels have stamped on what jesus had promised basi wale malaika wawili wakawa wametilia muhuri kila ambacho Yesu Kristo alikuwa ametabiri apostle paul uh, mtume paulo while at corinth akiwa katika kanisa la korinto as he was teaching people about the lord's table akiwa anawafunza wale watu ama kanisa kuhusu uh, ibada ya meza ya bwana remember there were some who were coming while they were drunk unajua kwamba maandiko nasema kuna wale walikuwa wamekuja wamepiga mtindi kweli there were some even who were coming with their greediness they were just eating even before they were told to Na kuna we, na kuna wengine walikuwa nakuja wakiwa na njaa kweli wanakula kabla wa, ya meza kupeanwa and paul told them na paulo akawaambia that christ said yesu christ alisema as we partake of this cup kwamba tunaposhiriki kikombe hiki we are proclaiming his death tunatangaza kifo chake till he comes back mpaka atakaporejea in first corinthians chapter 11 verse 26 katika kitabu cha wakorintho wa kwanza mlango ni 11 mstari wa 26 so when we partake the lord's table kwa hivyo tunaposhiriki meza ya bwana tunatangaza that our master died wa kwamba bwana wetu alikufa and he's no longer in the grave na baada ya kufa hayupo kaburini he will one day come back again kwamba tunatarajia siku moja atarejea the first time to rapture us to take us back kwa jambo la kwanza kuweza kutunyakua na kutorejesha nyumbani when we will meet with him in the air wakati ambapo po wale waliokoka watakutana naye mwinguni the second time basi na mara ya pili when he will come physically and step here on earth ambapo atakuja yeye mwenyewe na kutima, kusimama ama kutembea hapa duniani apostle peter mle mtume paulo petero when he was also teaching pia akiwa anafunza remember he was one of the closest person the one in fact who was left in charge of the church unakumbuka kwamba petero ni baadhi ya wale ambao walikuwa watu wa ndani sana naye yesu kristo ah uh, In 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 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 4 Katika Petero wa kwanza waraka wa kwanza wa Petero mlango ni wa 5 mstari wa 4 He says that when the chief shepherd appears Anasema kwamba yule ambaye ni mchungaji mkuu atakapo wadia So he's talking about the coming back of the chief shepherd Kwa hivyo anazungumzia kuhusu kurejea ama kuja kwa yule mchungaji mkuu He says when he will appear Anasema atakapofika When he will come Wakati atakapofika In his glory Katika utukufu wake Then he will give people crowns Kwamba atawapa watu tuzo la ile crown inaitwa taji It is not in vain brothers and sisters Wapendwa ndugu dada si kazi bure tunayofanya katika Kristo Let us continue in this walk of Christ Sisi kwetu kujiweza kujikaza katika safari hii I know bishop for those who do come for bible study he took us through the crowns that Christ will give to us Najua kwa wale ambao wanakuja katika mafunzo ya Biblia siku ya Jumatano askofu amekuwa akitufunza jinsi ama zile taji ambazo watu watapokezwa katika maisha ya Ukristo. Then John was the beloved disciple. Na sasa Yohana alikuwa ni yule mpendwa wake Yesu Kristo. The one who used to lie in the bosom of Christ. Aye ambaye kabka wakati mwingi alikuwa kifuani mwake Yesu Kristo. He talks to us in first John chapter 3 verse 2 and says Hey, we don't know how it shall be. Na anazungumza nasi katika waraka wake wa kwanza katika mlamsari wa mlango wa tatu anatuambia hajui jinsi siku hii itakavyokuwa. But he says when he shall appear when he comes back. Lakini anasema kwamba atakaporejea. We shall 
see him ila kwamba sote tutamuona and we shall be like him na sisi sote tutakuwa kama yeye oh what an encouraging word ni neno la kutia moyo kuna even if you are going through trouble ya kwamba kama unapitia shida wakati kama wa leo hata kama unapitia wakati mgumu wakati wa leo uweze kutiwa moyo ndugu dada we shall appear before the lord ya kwamba tutaweza kuenda mbele zake bwana na kama tutamuona jinsi alivyo na tutakuwa kama yeye and we shall be with him na tutakuwa pamoja naye katika maisha umilele haleluya amina then enoch Alafu Enoch nae an old old prophet in the old testament nae ambaye ni jamaa nabii mzee katika agano la kale something that moses did not pick and write about kitu ambacho Musa anaponukuu hakuandika when he was writing the book of genesis akiandika katika kile kitabu cha kutoka mwanzo but, but jude tells us lakini yuda anatuambia in jude chapter 1 verse 14 katika kitabu cha yuda mlango ni wa kwanza mstari wa 14 he talks about enoch the seventh from adam ananukuu kuhusu kwamba enoch ambaye ni wa saba kutoka katika uzao wa adam he made a prophecy during his days kwamba alitoa unabii nyakati zake remember this is the man who walked with God until he was no more. Kumbuka kwamba Enoch ni yule ambaye alitembea na Mungu mpaka hakuonekana tena. He didn't die, he was raptured. Enoch mpaka wa leo hajafa, yeye alinyakuliwa na Mungu. So Jude is telling us. Na hivyo Yuda anatuambia. That Enoch prophesied. Ya kwamba Enoch akatoa unabii. And he said, behold the Lord comes with 10,000s of his saints. Na anasema kwamba tazama Bwana anarejea anarejea akiwa na maelfu kumi ya watakatifu wake The Lord is coming back with the saints. Na kwamba Bwana anarejea akiwa na wana, wana, watakatifu wake. The second time he's coming back he's coming back with the saints. Mara ya pili anaporejea anarejea akiwa na wale watakatifu. The saints that will have been raptured. Wale ambao watakuwa amenyakuliwa. Then Christ uh, well, as John the Revelator na kama jinsi Yohana katika hali ya ufunua anavyoandika He concluded the book of Revelation by saying Anakamilisha kitabu cha ufunuo na kusema In chapter 22 verse 20 he says He who testifies this says surely I am coming quickly Katika huo mlango ni wa 22 na mstari wa 20 anasema kwamba yele ambaye anatoa unabii na anasema hivi kwa hakika Huh. Surely I am coming kwa, quickly. Kwa hakika naja na naja upeshi. He is coming quickly. Anakuja kwa upeshi. He is coming quickly. Anakuja na kwa upeshi. Quicker quicker than you may you, you may imagine. Kwa upeshi na upeshi zaidi kuliko vinsi unavyofikiria. And John as a good saint says Maranatha come O Lord Jesus. Na yeye Yohana kama mtu mshimu mkuu mzuri wa Mungu anasema Maranatha hata hivyo njoo bwana wetu Yesu Kristo. Come Lord Jesus. Njoo bwana wetu Yesu Kristo. His heart was expectant. Moyo wake ulikuwa na matarajio because you know the lord is coming with crowns na kwamba anajua yesu bwana anarejea akiwa na taji you know that the lord is 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 bringing to an end this age na kwamba bwana anakamilisha maana tamatisha mateso na dhiki hii so that he can start a new age ili kwamba aweze kwanza mfumo mpya of eternity mfumo wa maisha ya milele uh, before we wind up dhuhuri uh, uh, ya leo kabla tamatishe let's look at the characteristics of his coming wacha tuangalie tabia ama jinsi Yesu Kristo atakaporejea mara ya pili number one thing we need to know that it will be public jambo la kwanza lazima tufahamu ni kwamba itakuwa ni peupe Hakuna mfukujificha. He will come publicly. Atakuja kila jicho litamuona. This is what the word of God says. Na hivi ndivyo neno la Mungu linasema. In Revelation chapter 1 verse 7. Katika kitabu cha Ufunuo mlango ni wa kwanza mstari wa 7. Behold he is coming with the clouds. Inasema kwamba tazama. Mstari wa 7 anasema tazama yuaja na mawinguni ma na mawinguni and every eye will see him na kila jicho litamuona even they who pierced him will see him na hao walio mchoma pia watamuona and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him na kabila zote za dunia wataomboleza kwa ajili yake even so amina naam amina He will come publicly. Atakuja adharani. He will be seen by each and every eye. Ataonekana na jicho kila jicho. How I do not know. Jinsi sinisipofahamu. But the Bible says that he, the sign of the son of man will be seen Laki, in the heavens. Lakini Biblia neno linasema kwamba mwana wa damu ataonekana mbinguni, mawinguni. And I want to believe that each and every eye will be focused to check 
and to see what is going to happen. Na kila nataka kukuwaza na kufikiri kwamba kila jicho litakuwa kutizama kuona kipi kitakachotukia. Then they will see the son of man descending. Alafu sasa watamuona bwana Adamu akiteremka akishuka. Sometime back in 1988 I was still in high school. Wa mtama hapo miaka kidogo ya 1988 nilikuwa katika shule ya upili. We heard from the news na tukasikia katika vyombo vya habari Jesus had descended in a certain church in Kawangware <laughs> kwamba Yesu Kristo ameonekana katika kanisa fulani pale Kawangware Somebody you can remember that incident wale ambao walikuweko kama yeah, I can see yeah. John Kashera can, re- can mm. recall that incident kule kwa Mary I don't know if he ran from Dandora because he was living in Dandora or why those times Sijui. i don't know if he went up to kawangware to see jesus sijui kama ndugu yohana ulifurilizo ulikata mbio kutoka katika kule kijijini kwenye ruai ukienda kumuona yesu kristo kawangware da but we read in the newspapers the following day lakini katika vyombo vya habari tukasoma tena siku iliyofuatia and we saw a turbaned guy an asian turbaned guy was there cool with this prophetess tukaona kwamba muindi 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 akiwa amevalia kitambaa chake amefunga cha pilipili bai kilaemba chake ameshimama na huyu mtumishi sasa and they were there she was saying christ has come huyu mtumishi ambaye ni mtumishi katika watu wake anasema sasa huyu ndiye kristo nilikuwa nataja kumuhusu and there were only a few people probably those who are living in kawangware riruta na, maybe they are the only ones who met to go and see him na kwamba kulikuwa na kusanyiko kidogo tu la watu natumai ni watu wachache tu wala aliweza kuweza kufanya nini kuwashawishi kwenda kuona kristo wake but my bible tells me that each and every eye will see him lakini biblia ambayo ninaisome na naambia kwamba kila jicho It's not for a few individuals. Si kwa walio wakoka tu, ana wasiokoka watamuona. Na unaona kwamba wataomboleza. They will mourn because some will have rejected him completely. Wataomboleza kwa sababu wengine wao watakuwa ni wale walio mkana kabisa. And they will be they will mourn knowing that their time of judgment has come. Na wataomboleza kwa sababu watakuwa na uhakika kwamba wakati wa hukumu ni sasa. Those who will have been who will have gotten saved during the period of tribulation. Na kwa wale ambao watakuwa wameokolewa kipindi ndi cha mateso na viki they mourn with joy watakuwa na omboleza kwa furaha kuu that their, 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 their deliverance has come ya kwamba ukombozi wao umetimia number 2 jambo la pili he will come in person yeye mwenyewe atakuja hata tumana acts chapter 1 verse 11 katika kitabu cha matendo ya mitume mlango ni wa kwanza mstari wa 11 angels told the crowd basi malaika wakawaambia kusanyiko that this jesus you are seeing being away ya kwamba huyu kristo ambao mnamwona anatwaliwa namna hii in the same manner will he come basi hivyo hivyo ndio atakavyorejea he will come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven vivo hivyo alivyo paa kwenda mbinguni ndivyo vivyo atakavyorejea remember when he went to heaven he was in a body Um. Unaona jinsi alivyopaa kwenda mbinguni alikuwa katika maumbile ya kiumbe wa Akwa katika hali ya kivulivuli. Kwa hivyo kurejea kwake mara ya pili. He will also come back in a body. Atarejea vivyo hivyo akiwa na mwili wake mzima. And he will step on Mount uh, Olivet. Na atasimama katika mlima wa Mizaitini. Remember he said I will come. Unakumbuka kwamba yeye mwenyewe akasema ni nitakuja nitarudi. In John chapter 14 verse 3. Katika kitabu cha Yohana mlango wa 14 mstari wa 3. He didn't say he will send somebody. Hakusema atatuma mtu mwingine. But he said he will come. Atasema ni nitarejea. Then another thing. Na jambo lingine anasema. His second coming. Katika kurejea kwake mara ya pili. It's a big secret. Basi ni siri kuu. He will come in secret. Atakuja katika siri kuu. On the day he supposed to come is is a secret. Ama kwa hakika siku ile ambayo atarejea hakuna mtu ajuae. Because it will be suddenly kwa sababu itakuwa ghafla binivu it will be unexpected ni jambo ambalo analita kwa limetarajiwa people will continue will be continuing with their own lives wa kila mtu atakuwa anaendelea kawaida na maisha yake kama vile mtumona and there are various parables that the lord has given na katika ile mifano mingi ambayo Yesu Kristo amepeana he has given a parable amepeana mfano kwamba that uh, is coming are likened to such and such eh, kwamba kurejea kwangu mara ya pili itakuwa namna ama mambo kama haya people will be continuing with their usual life kila mtu atakuwa anaendelea na katika 
shughuli zake za kila siku wale wa kuolewa atakuwa naolewa the drunkards will continue getting drunk and even singing like they are on the top of the wall walevi watakuwa katika vilabu vyao wakibugia mvinyu but what they will not know lakini kila hawatafahamu that the son of man na kwamba mwanadamu will be coming suddenly na kwamba atakuja pasipo na ilani Bible says in the twinkling of an eye Biblia inasema kwamba kufumba na kufumba kumfungua for as the lightning comes out of the east kama jinsi radi inavyopiga kutoka katika mashariki and shines even unto the west na kumwanga wake unaonekana katika magharibi so shall also the coming of the son of man be hivyo hivyo ndivyo itakavyokuwa kurejea kwa mwanadamu Matthew 24 verse 27 katika kitabu cha Mathayo mlango ni 24 verse 27 in, in, in western kenya where have been uh, brought up kule magharibi ambapo mimi nimezaliwa we experience a lot of thunder and lightning umekuwa na migurumo ya uh, na migurumo na uh, ule lightning <laughs> and lightning <laughs> na radi na migurumo na ngurumo and, uh, and 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 we used to joke when we were young that uh, god is taking pictures Tua, tukiwa wachanga tulikuwa tunasema tunatoa mizaha kusema hivi hadi kwamba wakati kunakuwa na hiyo radi na migurumo ni kwamba Mungu anapiga watu picha when you see that flash unapoona huyo huo huo mwale could say amechukua nyingine unasema amepiga picha nyingine tena because they are, they are plenty in western kenya kwamba kule magharibi anapiganga picha mingi so the same way lightning flashes kama jinsi mwanga ama huo huo mwangaza unapoonekana wa radi the same way Christ will come itakuwa vivyo hivyo ni kama suddenly, Mungu atakapo jinsi tu punde ghafla suddenly punde tu ghafla immediately the sign of the sign the son of man will be seen in the sky punde tu kwamba ishara ya mwanadamu itakapoonekana kule mawinguni probably as people will still be gazing not knowing what is Pengine happening kama watu watakuwa naangalia juu kutoka kujaribu kufahamu ni nini kinachoendelea suddenly they will see the son of man and coming down punde, in his glory punde si punde watamwana mwanadamu akishuka akiwa na utukufu wake oh that day the bible says nobody knows the day or the hour biblia nasema kwamba kuna mtu anayefahamu siku wala saa in mark chapter 13 verse 32 it says nobody even the angels nobody knows the day or the hour ya kwamba katika kitabu cha marko mlango wa 13 mstari wa 28 Mark chapter 13 verse 32 Mlango wa 32 inasema kwamba hakuna mtu anayejua siku wala saa Nobody knows the day or the hour Hakuna anayefahamu siku wala saa People have tried to to project the day Watu wamejaribu kufanya utafiti mwingi kuhusu kuredia mara ya pili kwa Yesu Kristo In 1533 mwaka wa 1533 certain man by the name Stephen Mtu kwa jina Stephen He told the people on the 19th October of that year the Lord Jesus was coming. Akawaambia na akawaambia kwamba nimefanya utafiti na ni kuhakika kwamba tarehe 19 ya mwezi wa 10 katika mwaka huo kwamba Kristo alikuwa anarejea. But unfortunately there is nothing that happened. Na kwa hakika hakuna kilichotukia. And even the year 2000 as we are waiting for the millennium. Hata mwaka 2000 tukivuka kubadilisha uh, ali ya aita nini sasa ya people were expecting they were saying that is the end of the the age e ilikuwa watu wengine wakajifungia wengine wakasema huo ndio itakuwa mwisho wa ulimwengu huu others who never slept on that day because they believed Christ was coming on that day kuna wengine siku hiyo walilala kabisa wanafikiri wasiamke tena walijua Kristo anarejea siku hiyo they were speculating that Christ is coming back in the millennium kulikuwa na tetesi kwamba Yesu Kristo anarudi katika mageuzi hayo oh they did not understand hawakuwa na ufahamu that nobody knows the day or the hour kwamba kuna anayefahamu siku wala saa not even Jesus himself hata Yesu Kristo mwenyewe akasema not even not, not even the angels hata malaika wenyewe wana ufahamu they do not know the day hawakujua siku wala saa and sister mpendwa ndugu dada it will be suddenly itakuwa tu punde and the bible is urging us na biblia inatusihi that we need to live a holy life ya kwamba tuishi maisha ya utaua we need to stop compromising ya kwamba tuache hali ya kucheza mizaka sana tuweze kusimama wima katika imani we need to walk in a godly manner tutembee na tuendende katika njia ya kiungo in whatever area you are in katika kila eneo ulio uko ndani pursue righteousness fuatilia na ufuatilie haki ufuatilie na ufuatilie utakatifu this jesus kwa mkuu wa huyu yesu kristo is coming back anarejea 
how I pray. Na jinsi ninavyoomba. All of us. Ya kwamba si sote. Be, be partakers. Tuwe ni watu wa kuweza in the, kushinda rapture. Katika hali ya so that, kuweza kunyakuliwa. So that we be among the company. Kwa ili kwamba tuwe ni katika kundi hile that will be coming down with him. Ambalo litakuwa linarejea mara ya pili naye. When he be coming for his second time. Na atakapokuwa anarejea kwa mara yake ya pili. Brothers and sisters. Wapendwa ndugu na dada. Are you ready? Je, uko tayari? For his coming. Kwa kurejea kwake kwa mara ya pili. Because his second coming. Kwa sababu kurejea kwake kwa mara ya pili. Marks the time of judgment. Inaashiria kule hali ya hukumu. His second coming. Kurejea kwake mara ya pili. Marks the time of separation. Itakuwa ndio mwanzo wa kuweza kutenganishwa. When when the go when when, when uh, it's like a farmer separating the goats and the sheep. Ni kama ule mfugaji anavyotenganisha kondoo na mbuzi. Are you ready for his second coming? Je, uko tayari kwa kurejea kwake mara ya pili? I want us to stand up on our feet. Naomba tusimame kwa miguu yetu. Remember before the second coming. Kumbuka kabla ya kurejea kwake Yesu Kristo mara ya pili. Will be taken away. Kanisa litakuwa limenyakuliwa. Then a seven year of seven year period of tribulation. Na miaka saba ya hali ya dhiki kuu. A time of torture. Wakati wa mateso. A time of mourning. Wakati wa kuomboleza. A hard period in, in, the, in the life of many. Wakati mgumu kwa watu wengi. But the Lord is gracious. Lakini Bwana ni mwingi wa neema. Tarudi Yesu Amen Hallelujah Oh Tarudi Bwana Amen Oh Imba Hallelujah Amen Hallelujah Oh Sema Hallelujah Amen Nia oh atarudi Kristo amen nia alleluia oh atarudi bwana amen nia oh twimbe ni haleluya amen nia oh twimbe ni haleluya amen nia alleluia amen